Hey, what's up? Sherry Emerald here. Looks like we just got this thing started up. So, all right. This will be a, a live stream. I've got a lot of stuff here to uh, unbox. So, got this thing started up. Get this audio turned off. So we have a little delay here. It's a little confusing. But we have here our stuff I've been trying to get unboxed for quite a while. So I figured I would just do it and get it over with. Hopefully everything's coming through here on the video. And we will see. Some of these things, I guess there's really no point in uh, more or less just unboxing them. But I've got a uh, the robe for Deadpool right here. You know what? Let's just go ahead and open it up. And that's what it looks like. So this is what he used at the, uh, you know, it's not exactly a direct copy of what he had um, wore at the end of the movie, but uh, it, it pretty much gives you an idea of what it is you're trying to duplicate. So this would go on to you know, your Hot Toys Deadpool to recreate the end scene of the Deadpool movie. And I, I, you know, I'm just starting top down, so no real rhyme or reason to the things that I'm doing here. Bought this uh, kind of like an old style Spider-Man suit here, but I don't much care for this is it's orange so you got these little sneakers right there and some articulated fingers that work kind of like Gumby do with a little wire in them or Gumby does you can move the hand around those are pretty cool And we have some dropped frames here, so see if we can fix this. This is the first time, so I expect there to be lots and lots of problems with this, and it appears that there are. So, oh well. Anyhow, <clears throat> comes with these uh, little, uh, I don't know what you call them, sweatpants, and comes with this Spider-Man jersey here. So I'm assuming what this is supposed to represent would be like when he was, um, you know, in the comics and in, in the first movie, he became like a wrestler. I think that's what this is supposed to be. So here's his little his little wrestling helmet. So this would be for making a, you know, 
a Spider-Man Homecoming, or well, not Homecoming, a Spider-Man Homemade suit without it being from the movies. And like I said, it's orange and not red, so I'm a little disappointed in that. So this is just uh, some of the small junk here. I bought this. I think it's really a, I don't know, an Al Pacino outfit. I bought it because I had something planned I wanted to do with uh, my mask figure, which also is in this stack. But it's got the uh, white pants. I wanted to see if I couldn't uh, customize my mask figure with the white pants and a little uh, hat. I think you might be you know, understanding where I'm going. I hope this video is okay. Hope you all can hear it. Blue Steel 30, welcome. First live stream. I hope this thing's going well. Uh, I've got a delay, so uh, I'm just in faith that everything's coming out well. Let's kind of go up through some junk. Got this really cool head here for my Black Panther. Really stoked about that. This looks really nice. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. I want to maybe change some lighting around here. See if this makes anything any different. But uh, this really looks really nice. I, uh, everything's yellow for some reason. I don't know how to light correct this. So, we got uh, this. I'm really excited about this. It's what was needed in the Black Panther. So now we finally have the head sculpt that we should have got with the figure. All right. Let's get through some more junk before we start getting to the good stuff. Bought this uh, little one six scale toolbox because uh, you know Tony has to have the things that he does in order to do the things that he does. So this is a really cool little little box of tools here. I haven't opened it yet. Um, I need to find a better place to put it at. Well, I'll probably buy one of those little snap on style toolboxes that we see um, Tony Stark use in the movies. I haven't found a one six scale one. I think there's like a one fifth or a one ninth, which is close enough. And I'll probably do one of those. So this is really cool. Really happy I found this. I think I got this on one sixth kit. Uh, it's made by Zyko, I think. Yeah, or um, however you say that. So this is cool if you're looking for some one six cool, one six scale tools. And I've got a, uh, a Bumblebee. I own a Bumblebee Camaro, uh, 2010 limited edition Chevrolet made Bumblebee Camaro. So I'm a big Bumblebee fan in that regards. I don't collect much of it because I can't find the first generation, well, not the first generation, the first movie Bumblebee stuff easily. A lot of copycat cars out there and whatnot, but mine's an actual real one limited edition CTH from Chevrolet. All right, so that's that stuff. I've got these uh, couple of Fisons here. I've got some ideas on things I've been wanting to do with Fisons. I'm an, I've um, I'm trying to figure out how to make the body matches the head. I've got some ideas on what I'm going to do there. So these are some of the new Fisons. This is the SO2A mid bus suntan, super flexible, stainless steel, 26 points of articulation bodies. And this one is the PLMB 2016 S17B. So, stainless steel, seamless bodies. I don't know, you know, you guys can guide me what you think I should be doing here. I just have, uh, you know, a whole bunch of uh, boxes behind me. All sorts of toys that I haven't had an opportunity to totally unbox. So... I don't want to waste my time on something that nobody's interested in, but I'll show you what comes in a Fison box. So there's different kinds of Fisons, if you will, and they're just your regular standard bodies, and then they start getting into the collectible figures, which include clothing and stuff, but they always come just as such. There's, there's nothing in them, it's just an empty body, hands, and uh, uh, it's articulated. The stainless steel ones don't make any noise when you move them around. So that's really nice. They uh, go right into, right into position. 
So yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to change the color on these. I want to match up the head sculpts better for when I do buy some customs. So that's these right here. These two bisons. You can pick these up for, gosh, under a hundred bucks. And the Big Bad Toy Store sells them. Lots of different places sell bison figures. I love them. They are great. All right, so let's continue with the stuff that I already know what it is. This is one of my grails. I was really, really, really been wanting one of these for quite some time. And it's the Mark III Gunmetal. Sideshow exclusive. This was a uh, release from, I believe, one of the Comic Cons, if I remember correctly. So I was wanting to do an unboxing of this and just haven't gotten around to doing these things yet. So here it is. One of my Grails. Actually, probably one of the last grails that I hadn't picked up yet. I, I have I have had the, um, what was the other one called? There's the gunmetal and uh, the Mark III and the Mark IV. So this is the Mark III. I've had the Mark IV for a little while. So I finally was able to add the Mark III here. And it's it's an antiquated figure. I mean, it's the Mark III, which was what? Mark 70, Uga Maspi Series 75, I think is what it was originally. And then they just repainted it. So this is the Silly Things edition. Um, and this is definitely going to go on display. And it's got the old Robert Downey Jr. face head sculpt in there. Really a good looking piece. I love the Mark III and Mark IV. So I'm really happy to have this for my collection. And it will definitely go up. Let's silence this. Alright. Sorry about that interruption. Alright, so this is definitely going out on display. It's, it's really the same thing as some of the other figures, so there's really no articulation movement on it. I'm going to get a 4K video of it and post it up because it's really a nice figure. I really like it a lot. So I'm very happy to finally have added this to my collection. Dino, hi! Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the, uh, the video. Now, again, it's my first video live. A little nervous. I have no idea what I'm doing. Decided to do this. By the way, this box is really cool. It, it's cut in. All the little things are cut into it. So, that's cool how they did that. So let's set this aside. I'm running out of space to store my figures is probably the biggest problem if you can imagine. All right, so I bought, hopefully you guys had seen, the first Deadpool that I bought was the Sideshow creation of it. And this Deadpool is based off of more or less the comics, I guess you would say. It was before the movie Deadpool was available. So it's kind of like uh, the comics or, or the video game Deadpools. I did a, uh, did a video on this. And Deadpool's pretty cool. You know, there's the Merc with the mouth. He breaks the fourth wall. So I did a video on that. And then I added also, when you would say, the movie came out. And Hot Toys made their version of Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool. Had to buy that. One of my favorite characters, one of her uh, collectibles. I really like this guy. He's really cool. And so I've added this to it. And needless to say, even though this isn't part of the cinematic storyline, it might be. This is actually called the Lady Katana. But you know who it is. That's Lady Deadpool. No doubt about it. I did a video on this as well. So I told us we shared all this. There you go. <laughs> Welcome. I shared all this to share this. I also have ordered the um, the dog. There's a dog pool that somebody 
had made uh, ordered through 1-6 kit. So I'm waiting for that to arrive. So I bought this. It's the Deadpool Core. And I've not opened it up yet. <clears throat> so this will be the first time looking at this. So let's just crack this open real quick. I really got this, I guess, for the dog and the squirrel and the head pool, even though I got a really cool head pool with the sideshow one. Uh, and I guess kid pool. I'd, I'd like to figure out some way of making... <laughs> Pardon me. I'd like to figure out some way of making the kid pool maybe a bash or something on it. So, let's see. Gentle Giant made this. So originally when I first started making um, videos, I was filming all of them on the kitchen table. And oh, by the way, this is a limited edition. 275 out of 630. So I moved everything back here into the spare bedroom and I don't have a name for it. It's not called the dork room or anything like that. Probably should be. It's like my man cave. So these aren't I don't know, what would you say? These are more statues than anything else. But they're 1-6 scale, which is cool. So here's Doc Pool. Get him out of the box. In the dead, dead Pool, what was it called? Dead Core? Corp? What's it called again? I forget now. The Dead Pool Core? Dead Pool Core. I think the dog was Deadpool's favorite. Um alter version of him and he actually thought he could communicate with him. it's just a dog he didn't talk he didn't talk to Deadpool so there's the dog looks like we lost a couple of people oh well and Squirrel Pool I don't think I don't know what the whole story was of him I don't even know if he even really existed so there's a 1-6 scale Squirrel Pool so none of these are really from the movie, but uh, they are part of the Deadpool core. So that's why I picked them up. We've got head pool. We've already got a head pool, like I said, from the sideshow version. So I wasn't really getting this for the head pool. Here is head pool. Right there. And if you want to see any of these, you know, up close or if you want me to do better unboxings on them, I mean, shout out. I'm just sharing with you guys what I got. And I enjoy doing that. I don't work for any of these companies. I have a real full time job. I work, I'm in the IT field. So I have a real job, and this is where I just, I just, you know, just buy these and enjoy them, and share them with you guys. And so this is Kid Pool. Look at this Kid Pool, Deadpool Kid. There's a Kid Pool and a Deadpool Kid. I don't remember which one is which. One's a, a cowboy and one's a a young Deadpool, and I don't remember which one was which. So this is just a bust. And he also he has like kind of you know, like lightsabers instead of ninja swords. The Deadpool kid does. So there is Kid Pool or Deadpool kid or whatever. I may end up, you know, like I said, trying to figure out a way to make a custom version of this and actually having a figure. So those are that. Now let's start getting to some of the meat. 
Let's open up these and we know what they are first off. And again, I've not opened any of these up myself yet. Well, live unboxings here. This is Winter Soldier, Captain America 3. I bought this from Big Bad Toy Store. So, the Captain America 3 Winter Soldier, not really Captain America 3, let's see, Captain America Civil War Winter Soldier. A lot of people didn't have a lot of love for it because it didn't come with all the stuff that the first Winter Soldier did. It came with a lot of stuff. So this one, I didn't have the original Winter Soldier, so I bought this one to have for my collection. So there's the box, standard Civil War box. There's a shadow box to people responsible for creation of this figure. And I don't know how in-depth to go, maybe just pull them out, show them to you, and move on. Tell me what you guys like. Do you want me to stop on one of these, back up, go forward, skip ahead, get to the business? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boxes to go through still. So, and I'm not going any place. Much whatever y'all want. all y'all's time. Thank you very much for coming and watching this. And thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching my videos. Mark 30. I've unboxed that. I've actually got, I've been working on that, uh, editing it. Let me show it to you. I've got it up here on, on my uh, shelf. Loved the Mark 30. Blue's my, one, my, my favorite color. So that was a no-brainer. I tried to build the Mark 30 and was never pleased with the way the paint was turning out on any of it. So I have this Mark 33. It's literally in pieces. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So this is the Winter Soldier. Really love the, the shiny on the arm there. It looks like it's metal, but I don't know. It feels cold to the touch. Do any of you guys know whether this is actually metal or not? I don't know. So there he is. Sebastian Stan. Sebastian's name? Sebastian Stan? I forget how to say his last name. And so now I have a Winter Soldier for my collection. And he comes with nothing. He doesn't come with anything fancy. He comes with comes with um, one firearm, this big uh, rifle, shotgun, whatever it is, and that's it. Just his arms, and this, and a clip, magazine clip for the rifle. So he got a lot of non love because of all that. Let me grab this Mark Thirty Blue Steel. Show that to y'all. Yeah, that's awesome. Loved the way Tom Holland Spider-Man was created, portrayed in Civil War. Loved Spider-Man Homecoming. And here's the blue steel right here. Really love this. So what I've done is uh, I have some of these extra long poles that uh, I uh, use. So I put them up on here. I'm going to attach the flames. I have some flame effects I bought for him. What I, what I've actually done, you can't see it. I suppose I could show you. I'll just do it in another video. You've seen it. And if you see my little room tour, the little bitty room tour I did, you kind of see what I got. I've been studying what the layout was as the Iron Legion, I guess is what people like to call it, showed up at the end of Iron Man 3. So I've got him set up. So he's up on top there. And here he is, man. 
God, what a beautiful color. I don't know how well this camera is showing him up, but it, he's not blue as in, like, blue. Yeah, I agree. He's kind of blue, like, I don't know what you call this. It's not teal. It's not turquoise. It's just a cool blue. So I think the video is dinging it, turning it like a true blue. It's not a true blue. It's, it's like a blue green or I don't know how to describe it. But it's literally a Mark 33. And actually it should be the other way around. 30 would come before 33. But if you have the Mark 33, you have the exact same figure. And it doesn't come with the head sculpt. Now, I've got a lot of head sculpts. If you've seen some of my videos, you know, if I wanted to turn this into a, a head sculpt, I could. I think I'm pretty much past that. I don't know if I'm going to do any more head sculpts. But yeah, I really love this. Love this blue. Love this Love this figure. The Mark 33 was one of my first figures. I think Mark 17 Heartbreaker was actually my first figure that I bought. Uh, Hot Toys figure that I bought. So that's the Mark 30 Blue Steel. Really digging this guy. Let's see. Next in the stack, Agent Phil Colson. This was another one of those uh, grails that I've been wanting to get for a while, so I found a uh, supposedly unopened one. You have to have a Phil Colson, in my opinion. He's, God, he's, I don't believe there would be a shield if it was for Nick Fury and Phil Colson, and whether he went to Tahiti or however that played out. You know, I've only watched one of the Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on television. I just don't have the time to do that, and I really want to. So I don't even know what the whole Tahiti thing is. I'm sure there's a big story to that. I need to catch up on that. So this is a brand new Agent Phil Coulson. And he didn't get much love in the movie. Even though he was in like, I don't know, about three of them or something to that effect. So I'm happy they made one of these guys. And I'm really happy to have them in my collection now. And now I'm actually able to, I don't know, unbox him. Like I said, I just haven't had the time to get to all of these. And I didn't want to cheat you all out of, I don't know if you guys dig me opening these or not. If you want me just to just show you the figures, do you like the fact that I take the time to pull them out of the box and do all the little stupid stuff? Or am I just wasting your time when I do that in all of my videos? I, I uh, really don't know. I thought I'd be different in doing things in that manner from the other guys or just saying, you know, here it is. Trust me, there's lots of people out there that make these videos. And I just wanted to do something different than what everybody else did. Oh, you know what? Let's get the, the credits on this. Let's put this all together. Totally blew off who made this figure. Sorry about that. So here's the, uh, the artist responsible for manufacturing this. Is that coming in? There we go. Here's your cast and crew for this figure. So let's put this together. So yeah, that, that, I guess that's really my question. You guys like that I can go through all the steps of here it is and, and, and actually open it up for you or you just want to see just the figure. Let me know. Tell me what your thoughts are on that. So wow, this is the first time seeing this. Uh, I haven't watched any other review on Phil Coulson. So this is new to me. Professor Professor Old Sum. Great, man. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for watching. Just going through a bunch of um, stuff that I haven't had an opportunity to unbox and sharing with you guys. So it's funny, they've got him actually on his stand. He comes already on the stand when you get him out of the box here. So this is an older figure. Uh, what is the MMS on this? 189. And now we're about 450, something along that line. Agent Phil Colson. Back from Tahiti.
Ah, thank you, Blue Steel. Thank you. And and I and that's uh, you know, because I think that's important. For instance, I've got the Mark Twenty Three shades coming. Uh, my very good friend, Shardabus Prime, picked it up for me down at San Diego Comic Con. I have not had the opportunity yet to make it to Comic Con. I will, so I'll be swinging by Shardabus's place uh, probably next week or the week after. Pick up my Mark Twenty Three and my Mark Forty One. Um, retro armor that he was very kind in picking up for me. So there's Phil Coulson. So now this is again an older figure. So it does resemble him, but not like they do nowadays. I mean, I don't know, man. It's like Hot Toys is... They've nailed it. J.C. Hong and the guys out there and the ladies out there that, that do this in the head sculpt division... I am just blown away. I am I am totally blown away. It's got some really cool little shiny little feet down here. And this is a really good articulated piece. So this is just their standard, no fancy body body. They didn't have to do anything in regards to making it seamless. So it's just a standard body. So it has all the their traditional articulations that you would expect with just a regular figure. And he comes with some interchangeable hands. He has his, you know, his relaxed hands here. He comes with a holding hand so you can hold papers and stuff in it. And he comes with a pistol hand for wrapping his pistol around there. And then kind of a, I don't know if you would say a pointing hand or maybe another pistol hand right there and for his pistols it's got this neat little accessory pack right there which comes with a clock or something to that effect I'm not a gun guy I mean I don't have any problem with guns I don't know anything about guns I know how to shoot a gun but I don't know you know if, I, I understand you know I know what a SIG is I know what a Glock is but I couldn't look at one and say, oh yeah, that's a Glock 26.2 or whatever. I have no idea. I have no idea. I really don't. So, this is his handgun. Most of the time these slide open. Let's see if this one does. And it does. So you can cock it back. Like such. There. And... I'm assuming this is the gun that he fired. Um, it sure looks like it. The big, huge, monstrous weapon here. And I'm not going to go into detail on, on a lot of this stuff. You know, I'm not going to. I don't know if this lights up. Looks like it might. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's a battery in it. That's how old this is. Sheesh. <laughs> Still lit up a little bit. So that actually lights up. Look at that. That's cool. Didn't expect that. That's really cool. The button down here turns that on and off. That's pretty cool. I like that. I didn't expect that. Like I said, I've not watched any of these videos on Phil Coulson, so I didn't expect this at all. Isn't that neat? That's neat. I really like that. That's really cool. All right. Sheesh. That's that's a bonus. I really am pleased with that. I'll be happy to put him on display. And he comes with his um, Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement Logistics Division. Is that what it stood for? He has... Oh, this is cool. All right. So what he has is a little walkie-talkie, his ID badge. I don't know if this is coming into focus or not. Um, the sunglasses that you know every agent has to have. His Captain America playing cards. Right there is collectible cards that he had 
a watch, his earbud, and his cell phone. That's cool. Captain America playing cards are off the hook. And he's got a folder here. Let's open this up. Got the folders that came with the um, Pepper Potts figure as well. I don't know what to do with most, most, most of this stuff. It just kind of sits in my little um, Iron Man garage, if you will. It's this little folder here, and there's nothing in here. So it's empty. That's the little file. Can see if that'll focus in or not. It says um, security level seven or above required. That's what it says. Clintech five one six. Hello, welcome to the channel. Musical math man, welcome. Thanks for watching. So that's that. Definitely have to. I'm definitely excited about Phil Coulson. Love Phil Coulson. Like I said, I need to start watching those Netflix. Ages of Shield videos. What's this Corvette's name that flies? It's got a name for his car. I don't remember what it is. Alright, next box. I think this is the mask. Jim Carrey. Yes, that's what this is. <sighs> so, the movie came out, what, the 90s? Early 90s? Ridiculously funny movie back then. I don't know if it stands up to the test of time nowadays. But, I had to have this. I mean, come on. It doesn't fit in, obviously, with Iron Man or anybody. But... Oh, what an what an awesome character, if you will. There are so many figures that man, I wish I could collect. Love Star Wars. Who doesn't love Star Wars? Love Star Trek. I love Predator line. And you can't be involved in comics and whatnot and not know who Superman and Batman are. You know what I mean? There are things that go without saying. But I just can't collect all of these these cool figures that are out there. I, I collect the Astromex because R2-D2 everybody loves R2-D2. I love R2-D2. But I just can't collect all the Batmans. Can't collect all the Supermans. Can't collect the Predators. Can't collect Marty McFly. All the other really, really, really super cool collectibles that are out there. So... I've committed to the Marvel MCU lineup, but every now and again, I like getting something else that is also cool. Like Wonder Woman. I ordered the Wonder Woman, um, the Fison figures, the Sparta. Love the Sparta movie. Uh, the Lady Sparta that I bought to go with that Fison. So this is Jim Carrey's mask. It looks a lot like him. I think this was made by... Uh, Stanton and Mason. So they actually, this was like the second time that they did this. They did one a few years back. But this one I think was in relation or in conjunction with Fison, if I remember correctly. It was a, a, a two-part company that was involved in this creation of the mask. And he comes with, you know, this. Comes with an alternate head sculpt. With his mouth open. Right there. He comes with with the mask. No Jim Carrey head sculpt though. So if you take the mask off, I mean there's no Jim Carrey there. But this is actually the mask. Comes with gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight additional hands. 
pointing, two fingers pointing, doing like the little pinching or rubbing together. Comes with this little dog. Little one six scale. I think this is a terrier. I don't know what kind of dog that is. I think it's a terrier. And the little dog's head comes off. I don't want to ruin the movie. But he becomes the mask also, the little dog does. It's a little magnet that holds it on. Well, so much for that. The magnet doesn't hold on very good, does it? There's the little dog mask right there. So that's pretty cool. He will go on display who knows where. It's it's like I don't totally run out of room. And I've got another hundred or so figures coming. You know what I mean? But how many Iron Man armors are there left? Twenty, probably. Gotta find room for twenty more Iron Man armors. I have to buy a house just to put all my figures in. Aside. Move on to the next one. Mark 15 Retro Armor. Mark 15 Sneaky, man. What a cool, really cool figure. And just like the Mark 41 retro bones. Even though in the movie it came colored as such, you can't go wrong with the red and gold, man. And that, of course, is why I purchased it. So the Mark 15, the real Mark 15, is on display top of the shelf here in the flight lineup pose. This one will go into my Hall of Armor. So we get this really cool shiny box. This was a Sideshow exclusive. And there's the names of the people responsible for the figure. Right there. And this literally is, it's the Mark 15. Nothing new to that. But, he's red and gold chrome, which is new. And he will go into the Hall of Armor. So will the Mark 41 retro armor. Wow. This guy... I am just really impressed with the chrome figures that they've made. My Mark 21 chrome, beautiful. The uh, the Mark 2 diecast that just was announced. I hope they do an Armor Unleashed. And I imagine they're probably going to do a chrome version of that as well. This guy looks amazing. Really like this gold chrome on here. So there's, I mean, nothing new. He is the Mark 15. But I wish it wasn't so yellow in here. All the light is just really yellowing everything up. It's not supposed to be so yellow in here. She had better lights. But see, so he's got chrome there on his thighs, and chrome on his face, and chrome on his biceps. Other than that, it's the Mark 15, regular Mark 15, which is a cool figure. Comes with just four hands, and lights, and a special 
seven-sided stand. Looks pretty cool. And I won't be using this stand. The stand will be staying in storage. He's going into the Hall of Armor, which uses the little round displays. So there's the Mark 15 to keep him out. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Uh, which one am I most excited for that we haven't gotten yet? <laughs> Hulkbuster? <laughs> Jeez. Man, I am really ready for Hulkbuster. I am sick and tired of waiting for that guy. So this came yesterday. 1-6 kit. This, I know, is Colossus. Uh -huh. I think the actual name for it uh, in ordering the uh, figure was uh, the steel. I forget who made this. Toys Era. Toys Era made this. Put these little um, box corner protectors on there. Second time I've got. I don't know what the other Toys Era was. Lady Katana came that way also. Those box protectors on there. Really nice. You know, it's like um, people collect the box art on the Hot Toys figures. And. UPS sometimes customizes your box. And of course, Hot Toys, they're not about to replace the box. They don't care about the box. The box is just for transporting the figure. The steel. Now, one thing I didn't much care for in the movie when they manufactured, you know, the steel or the Colossus, I think they did a great job. Not complaining about that. I guess what I'm complaining about was, or is, they didn't do his arms right. If you look at him, his arms are out of proportion. And that's because they used a live action person to portray him. It was actually, I think, five actors were required to make the Colossus. And when the people who did the generation of him. They didn't think to reposition his arms. So he ends up with these really whack out of proportion arms. Wow! Look at this. He's huge. Comes with the cuffs to hang Deadpool on. Comes with a couple of um, grasping hands. And these are the punching hands. Wow! And I'm telling you right now, he's to scale. There's no doubt about that. He's to scale. So this is great. This is really, really cool. Sheesh. Oh man, this is great. It's all part of the Deadpool collection here. What a great piece. He's heavy. You know, he's bulky. Now we need, what was her name? Teenage Nega Sonic Warhead. We need to get her. That's the next one we need. Jeez. Very happy with this. Very happy with this. Okay, one more box in this stack. Kind of a big box. Not, I 
even sure what this is. And no, I don't get these for free. I am not. Please don't think that I do. So me not knowing what this is is only because I can't keep track. It certainly isn't because they're just sending these to me and I can't keep up with it. I'm paying for one of these. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay. This is one I've been wanting. Yeah. Go stab, welcome. Vampirella, one six scale, Bison figure. Oh my God. Another one that I didn't watch any of the videos on because I wanted to be um, surprised myself with it. So let's see what this is first. Feels like it's probably the diorama. Thank you, Ghost Town. Thank you. Preview videos are the easiest to do, um, but I put a lot of research into them. I uh, really like doing them. I really just, I spend all my free time looking into this stuff. I really do. I don't know. It's like an obsession of mine. So I can see things that other people don't necessarily see, like the sneak peeks. And uh, only because I pay attention to what they're not saying in what they are saying. So there's this little heavy diorama here. I'm not a Vampirella fan, but I'm a Fison figure fan. And when I seen that Vampirella, that was uh, one that went without saying. That went without saying. I mean, what needs to be said here? It's Vampirella. Fison figure. Seamless body. You can't go wrong anyway in that. I own a few Fisons. Love every one of them. So here's the box. This is a sleeve style box, looks like. Here's the back of the box. Little story of who she is from a, a vampire planet, more or less, where instead of the rivers flowing in water, it flows blood. And there's a you know whole comic series. And this is executive TV league. Remember, Fison's changed out because of um, somebody stealing their stuff, and it's a Fison figure. That's what it is. Which figure got me collecting in the first place? Oh, it's not a slide. It comes off. Well, I collected Spider-Man figures, Toy Biz Spider-Man figures, way back in the day. And when I first seen that Tron light cycle that Hot Toys did, I was just blown away by that. Didn't pick one up. But when the Iron Man figures came out, and I wasn't, it wasn't like I was an Iron Man fan in the first place. Obviously a Marvel fan. Kind of like what I was saying before, 
you know, obviously I know Spider-Man, or, or I mean, uh, Superman and Batman. Just not a DC fan. Definitely a Marvel fan. Spider-Man is my guy. He's what got me collecting. But I didn't buy the first Spider-Man figures. I wasn't into Hot Toys at that point. But when the Iron Man figures started coming out, that's when I was like, I'm um, getting on that bandwagon right there. And the Mark 17 Heartbreaker was the first one that I purchased. And he still kind of holds that little uh, sentimentalness to him. So I think it's interesting that they call this the Asia version. And one of the questions was, will they be making a non-Asian version? I don't know. But, so she has... if you will uh, imagine an Asian appearance in her eyes. So some glitter on her eyebrows. The hair here is, is very, I don't know, mucky and matted. I feel like there's too much product in it. And I don't know really how best to uh, fix these, this hair. I'll have to do some research on that. So there's that. And this is the body. So let's get her head on her body. I love the seamless figures that Fison makes. I mean, love them. There's, it's, you can't go wrong. And there is Vampire Ellis, seamless body. So they don't make like a seamless hand. And that's because you have to change up the hands. She comes with interchangeable hands. She comes with uh, like a pistol grip holding hand, two of those. And those are like her attacking claws drawn. And then she comes with two relaxed hands also. And she looks great. No doubt about that. I'm really excited about this. So these boots, whether or not they come off or not, couldn't tell you. But whenever you get a custom Fison, and I don't mean custom as in somebody made it for you, but whenever you get a Fison figure that's been made with a purpose, as in this one, it was made to be Vampirella, it's not a good idea to take off her boots. So you're just going to want to leave them as they are. So it's not like it's a traditional Fison. It is. It's got all the characteristics and features that a Fison figure has. But you shouldn't be taking off the boots. But there she is. Really excited about this. She comes with also the... Not only the diorama, but a bat... Right there, some bracelets and armlets. This goes around her bicep, and she's got one for each of her wrists. And let's see what's underneath here. A cape. She comes with a cape. I'm going to put her together, take a quick little video of her, and put that up. Kate's got some weight to it. It doesn't feel like it's wired though, but it definitely has some weight to keep it hanging properly. Really excited about Vampirella. Excited about any Fison figure. Alright, that's that stack. think this is, I don't know what this is. I think I don't know what this is. Ah! That's what this is. So, like I was saying, I collect the Astromax. 
this is the Sideshow Collectibles C2B5 droid. Thank you, Collection Obsession. Yes, uh, this, of course, will be posted for you to watch later. You know, Detoffs. Detoff. The Ikea cases. I've got these bookshelves that I converted over. I thought about putting glass in front of them. But I have no idea where I'm going to put the Hulkbuster. Got another one of these shelves. It's running out of room. Alright, so C2B5 is another black astromech. This one's made by Sideshow. And Hot Toys has an R2D2 coming out. Uh, I believe it's next year. And it's literally just another R2D2. Only without all the accessories. Nothing fancy here. I guess if you, like myself, obsess over these things and you end up buying just whatever they make. Jeez. You don't care if it's just the same thing as the other r 2 2 But that comes back to what I was saying about you have to be selective on what it is that you get. You just, you just can't buy them all. I wish I could. I really do wish I could. So the uh, R2Q, R5Q, RQ, uh, whatever. The other black one is shiny. This one is not. So that's the main difference there. A non-shiny R2 unit, Astromech. And he comes with nothing. He doesn't even come with a little magnet to open anything. Uh, the doors do appear to open. Doesn't have the little piece in here to attach an arm. It's just a sliding bar. And this door looks like it's pressed in. Sometimes I have to do some work on these to get them to the way that they're supposed to be. But he'll have all the same features as... No, nope, that didn't go up goes up, but it's not staying. That sucks. You can pull these off and switch it around. Because there was non-continuity in the movies, sometimes that was the front of the arm, and the other times it was the other way around. So these, arm, these legs, or arms, or what do you want to call them, can be switched out and put on the other side. So if you want the piston in the front or the piston in the back, you can switch that around. Basic, basic, basic piece. So that's the R2 CB25. I do have the Hot Toy Stanley. I sure do. As a matter of fact, so this is the, the review station and the, the collection display. Where I work, like I said, I have a full-time job, a real job, um, in the other room, the other office, uh, where I have my computer set up. I, I'm, a, I'm an IT field. I'm a systems administrator. I have him sitting right next to me on the bookshelf in there. And that's where Stanley sits. Stan the man. Sure do. He sits on the bookshelf in there. Right next to my Bumblebee. I think it was made by 3A. Bust. Because uh, you know, I have to keep him with the car.
So again, this is another box. I'm not even sure what it is. Not until now. What do we have here? That's heavy. Mark 46! Ah! Man, what a treat. Thanks for coming in and watching this, you guys. You found the Mark 46. Stan, you know, he finally got um, his uh, handprint and his feet print put in the Chinese theater. His wife died a few weeks ago. I don't know how much you guys keep track of the news. I hope we have Stan with us for many, many years. Yeah, I... I wouldn't say Stan's my favorite figure. Everything more or less is displayed in here, but I have Stan next to me. And it's not like a love for him or anything, but he just didn't fit in with everybody else. He just didn't... He doesn't... He does, because he's in every one of the movies. You know what I mean? But he doesn't. He does, but he doesn't. I think I read or heard something that Kevin Feige had even said, and I hope I'm saying his name correctly, that Stan actually is a Marvel character. So I'm assuming Stan is the Watcher. And I don't know if, what their plan is or intention is with Stan. Mark 46. Die cast from Captain America Civil War. Standard die cast box. But I hope they do something with Stan. Reveal that he's a watcher or, or whatever. Not to sound morbid. But while we have Stan with us. You know what I mean? I think he's in his 90s. And God bless him with long life. If it wasn't for the creative genius of Stan and Jack Kirby and John Romeo, we wouldn't have any of this today. So a little different boxing, but the same on the die cast. Instruction manual, I need to read that. What did he do in Guardians of the Galaxy 2? I'm trying to remember what his... What did he do? Okay, so there's two display stands here. Two posing rods. A hard angled one, and then the normal bending articulated one. It's interesting, I haven't seen that before. I kind of remember the scene in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 where he was. Was he on that the same place where the Collector was? No, wait. That was in the first movie. Where was he in the Guardians of the Galaxy 2? So this is a cool base. Looks like it's some road debris here. A hole in the back, so that must be why the um, the bending rod. That's cool. A lot of times, though, these big displays are just no place really. Just you know, again for me, because space is such a premium to use them. So most of these don't get used. This one I'm probably going to use. I have to find out where am I going to put that at. Okay, so we have a um, uh, broken iron girder, flame effects, I'm digging the flame effects that they're putting out lately, really happy with that. A whole mess of batteries, my goodness, Captain America helmet. I'm assuming the neck piece. 
because if I remember correctly, the Mark 46, the helmet retracted into his body. And so here's the shoulder pieces. Now, uh, Mark 46 and Mark 47, really, this is the main difference on them. And um, besides the color, it's really just this. Zach Tran, thank you. Welcome to the channel. And here are the shoulder rockets, or excuse me, forearm rockets right here. Now, I want to do better videos on these. This is just, just to get them out. I've been feeling so bad about not getting these guys open and out and doing things. I just wanted to go through the whole shooting match, see if there's any ones in particular that you guys wanted me to go into detail with and specifically open. So I've got better videos, especially of this one that I will make. Smart 46, he deserves a, a, um, a video. No doubt about that. It's a unique piece. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh my God. And again, I haven't watched any of the videos of anybody else because I want to be, I want, I want to see these myself in the first place. God. He will get his own video, no doubt about that. Is this not lift up? There we go. So those lift up. And of course in Spider-Man Homecoming we've seen flame actually come out of there. They're not just brakes. They're actually exhaust ports. So we get a total of eight hands because um, one pair of them come with the flame effect. So needless to say on the video that I'll make of this, I won't go through the whole whole boxing. It's just going to be uh, posing and um, going over him and showing him in 4K on my on my 4K camera. This is just a little Logitech HD 1080 webcam that I'm using here. So my 4K is what I'll shoot this with. And again, I'm loving the likenesses that they do. And there's the damaged chest piece that the shield would go into. Mark 46. Ah, oh, man, beautiful piece. Beautiful piece. Favorite suit so far? I don't know. I still kind of have a uh, an attraction or a love for the Heartbreaker. I, I don't know if it's because he was my first suit, but I like the Heartbreaker, which of course means I also like the Mark 20 Python. And the what's, what's the opposite of the Mark Twenty? The Mark Nine. <laughs> Leonidas. I can't bring myself to buying Leonidas, but I own a Mark Three and a Mark Four. I own the gunmetal and the secret project. All right, so this is a uh, 125th scale Star Trek thing. I could probably guarantee you, I don't know if I'll ever have the time to put this together. But I like that they're all the same scale. I'm mean, a Star Trek fan, you know what I mean? So when I seen this come out, and they're all the same scale, I had to get it. So that's what this is for. But Leonidas, I think he's too expensive to buy. I bought the new one that came out. I forget who made that. Very happy with it. But if you keep track of the values of these, you know that the Mark III and the Mark IV cost a little bit of money. Gunmetal and the secret product. Wow. 
What is this? Ah, yeah. Okay, so as I was saying earlier in the video, another line that I really like, just can't, just can't bring myself to get, because it would open up a whole other ball of wax, the predator line. But this alien girl, I had to have her. Had to have her. I may probably break down and end up getting. Yeah. Uh, for instance, I have a. I have several Mark Sixes. Okay, not several. I think I have three of them, and then the diecast is coming out, which will be four. And I, the the worst one that I have, because of the old figures, they had the tendency to do what's commonly referred to as the pink panties. So I have an older Mark VI that I've been trying to decide what I'm going to do with. Because I have three of them right now. I have the two older ones, and then I have the re-release, which is plastic, and then of course in next year, I think it is, the die cast is coming out. So what to do with this other one? I don't know. I, I don't... I got the box out. I was going to box it up, sell it, do something with it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But yeah, a lot of times the plastic ones have decreased in value because of that. Often times they have not. The gunmetal and the secret project, the Mark III and Mark IV, they have not gone down in price at all. And there is a Mark III die cast that's been out for about two years. And it didn't affect the price on that at all. It's a cool, 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 cool figure. I showed you the Mark III gunmetal that I bought recently, and that cost some money, no doubt about it. So, Hot Angel series. So they made the Predator Girl a few years ago, and now this is the Alien Girl. And it's really, I don't even think it's from the actual movie. I don't think there was an Alien Girl in the movie series. But, she's hot. So the Predator Girl was Hot Angel Series 1. I think the Predator Girl actually has an MMS subscribed to her too. I think she's like, I don't know, MMS 36 or something. Yeah, I've seen some of those uh, tutorials. But, uh, and I don't have a problem with it being the pink panties. It's just that I have too many of them. So... That's why I'm trying to decide what to do with it. The other one kind of doesn't have the pink panties as bad. But, um... So I've got a Mark VI I need to figure out what to do with. Shoot out any suggestions. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to collect all the Predators. I think if you add up all the Predators, all the Aliens, and all the Soldiers, and all the figures or people that they made, I think it's like 55 of them uh, in that entire line. So, like, um, you know, Alien alien or Aliens is a line, and Predator is a line, and then there's Alien versus Predator as a line. And all of those figures that Hot Toys has made, I think it's 55 of them. So, I, I find it funny whenever somebody complains about another Iron Man figure coming out. I'm excited about another Iron Man figure coming out. You know what I mean? But they're like, oh, they're making another Iron Man figure. Thank God they're making another Iron Man figure. Have you counted all the Stormtroopers they've made? All the Batmen that they've made? So, I don't pay attention to the people that complain anymore whenever they make a new Iron Man figure. They're really only complaining because they're not making the 52nd Stormtrooper again. Or the 43rd Batman again. And God bless them. No problem with that. I, I don't collect them. But they've made, like I said, 55 Alien slash... I think it's 55. Alien slash Predator figures. 
Don't ever hear anybody complaining about that. Oh my god, they made another Predator! They have a new Predator that was announced at uh, San Diego Comic Con as a preview. Elder Predator. And I don't remember hearing anybody complain that there's a new Predator coming out. So this comes with two head sculpts. This is and kind of like what we were talking about with the uh, the Asian. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Zach. Do you collect six scale figures that aren't Marvel DC related? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't. Know. The mask I don't think was a Marvel DC, and um, of course, Alien Girl, she's not. Um, the uh, three hundred, the United's back here. Where's he at? Right there. And the Fison girl, not Marvel DC related. So, there we go. That's the uh, alien girl. And the big difference, of course, this is not Fison. This is Hot Toys. And Hot Toys, they have the things they are perfect at, for instance. They have mastered head sculpt. J.C. Hong and the other guys... And by the way, I don't know you. I don't know if y'all really understand this. I imagine you do. I'm preaching to the choir. But each one of those head sculpts that Hot Toys makes, that J.C. Hong and the crew do, they truly are hand painted. It's not mass produced. Each one truly is a work of art. So, like we were saying with the Vampirello as an Asian figure, you kind of have an anime eyes, and then you have the regular eyes. So however you want to display this. If you, if you like the anime eyes, you can display that. If you like the regular eyes, you can display that. And I'm going to do a video on this too. This figure deserves a video. So we'll get a video. And she's just hot. What can I say? She's hot. Oh, I got her. She comes with expert gloves or, you know, hands. Super long, kind of like Vampirella attacking hands. And this alien gun. What the hell? Sheesh. That's a beast of a... This kind of looks like... I've played Warhammer 40k. And it kind of looks like something the Tyranids would have. You know, I don't, I don't know too much about John Woo movies, so I, I can't comment. Uh, you're talking about um, well, what was the name of that? Um, all right, now that's a diorama stand right there. Isn't that the Alien Queen? Was it John Woo and, and um, not John Woo? What was it? There's like a, 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 a. Are you talking about the uh, the Ada? Was the girl Ava? I, and trust trust me, I would collect everything that they made. I would buy it all. But money is obviously an object that doesn't just grow on trees. So I had to be selective on what I purchased. And, and, I, and I recommend that to anybody who's getting involved in collecting or hasn't collected before. Be selective in what you purchase, but love what you purchase. Just don't buy something just because. I mean, have a reason to purchase it. These are, these are, this is real money. That's kind of a brown, by the way. You can see that. I just noticed that. Check out. Check out that head. That's cool. So she'll get a 4K video, no doubt about that. And this is just, you know, just an unboxing, just to get you guys, or get me caught up to where I am. Some of these will never get a, 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 a real video involved in them. This tail is something else. It doesn't feel like it can be positioned. It just is there. So she's difficult to, to store. She's going to be a great display piece. Chow Yun-Fat. So that's a name I know, and I don't... Sorry. 
I don't uh, don't really know if that makes any sense at all. Down at this mess. All right, we're down to one more box. Big box. And I know exactly what this is. I wanted to buy three of these. Only bought one because they were sold out. But after getting it, I'm glad I didn't buy three. I don't even know where I'm going to put this one. King Arts 1-9 scale Iron Man collectible figures. Man, let me tell you what. There have been times when I thought to myself, if I hadn't started the 1-6 scale collectibles, I would have got with the 1-9. They're really cool, and they've made a lot of the figures that Hot Toys has not gotten around to making yet. But, at the same time, and, back up, and 1 ninth is smaller than 1 6, so it doesn't require so much room. But, 1 6 scale figures have been around for a very, 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 very long time. Barbie scale, G.I. Joe scale, you know, the large action figures, 12 inch figures. 12 inch figures are 1 6 scale figures. So, the amount of accessories and stuff for 1 6 scale is a lot easier to find, in my opinion, than 1 9 scale. So, I'm not going to transition over. I'm not going to be getting the 1 9 scale figures. Can't afford them, for one thing. They're almost as expensive as the Hot Toys. Not quite. But from what I've seen, the videos that I've watched on them, they're amazing. Now, I would buy a 1 9 scale Ant-Man because he shrinks. So, for instance, I have actually Marvel Select Ant-Man here I was going to open up as well. Civil War. Let's get to that here in a second. Just like I would buy a 1 quarter scale NECA Hulk if I liked it. I seen that. Wasn't too pleased with it, so I passed on it. But uh, because he, I believe Hulk gets bigger than what the one six scale has him. So I'd buy a one six scale. I'd buy a one nine scale Hulk, I guess. It'd be like a transition in between Bruce Banner and Hulk. So what this is. The mess is what this is. This is the Avengers base station uh, from Age of Ultron, where the Avengers took their stand and fought off all of the mm, Ultron sentries. And so it's designed to be tied into two others. Richie UK, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it is tough to say hard uh, no to a cool figure. Yeah, man, I'm telling you what, I'm trying to figure out whether or not to um, get the uh, Ghost Rider. I've got the Daredevil on order, waiting for him to come in. Same thing with Punisher. And uh, I'm not sure where I stand on uh, Punisher and Ghost Rider, but I have the Netflix Daredevil on order. And again, I haven't had an opportunity to watch it. I watched, I think, the first couple of episodes of Daredevil and just haven't had the time to watch it. So it comes with... Um, this is really thicker than the traditional ones. And it's articulated. I think the screw is even bigger. It comes with two of these. And it comes with plugs. To plug up the holes in case you're not going to use these. So this is designed to, to make a display for the Age of Ultron collection. Or, you know, the final battle there at the end where he's just fighting off all the sentries. And so these screw into... So the other two are identical. I mean, it's not like there's three different ones. They're identical to this. And you would put them into a giant circle to make the whole thing. 
And if you didn't want to display a flying figure into these, there's little plugs that go into those holes. And that is this. And that is that. And that is all the boxes. Except for, oh wait, what's this? Talk about this. Ah, this is the, uh, the little um, power thing that goes here. And again, it's part of the part of the three. So if you're just doing, you know, sideways, you do a couple figures. I'll probably do that. Because I have just my vendors just lined up here. It, that mess is all the Avengers. Thor and Quicksilver and two Scarlet uh, Witches and, and the two Black Widows and Black Panther and Maria Hill and, and the Civil War Falcon and Vision from the first Vision and Mark 45, War Machine Mark 3, Nick Fury, Captain America, Age of Ultron, I think. So I've run out of room. Hawkeye's back there. I've run out of room. Ant-Man, I've got Ant-Man going down, the King Arts, and two, that's from the Ant-Man movie. We've got the other Ant-Man over here because I don't know any place where to put him at. How often do you test your <sighs> Not often enough. Yeah, Ultron Sentry. Let's give it the program. The name of the base is called Sold Out. I have not been able to find any other map to dig on to eBay. It's just called Avengers Base. Avengers Base Station. Made by Toys Box. Toys Box is the same company that made the little um, Paul Bombers that I used. 3.0 that, that I stored them in. Toys Box, Avengers Base. And uh, I bought this through Big Bad Toy Store. And uh, the reason I shop mostly through Big Bad Toy Store is because they don't require you to prepay for it like some of the other companies do. If you if your purchase is more than $350, they require a 10% down payment, down payment then. And um, by the that, I don't have to give them a deposit to make the purchase. Whereas, Sideshow, you have to give, you're buying a $150 toy, you're having to give them 15 bucks right off the bat before you make the purchase. And when you have 20 figures on pre-order, which I think is where I'm at still, I mean, that's die casting out of $350, so $35 more or less, times 20, just sitting there not doing anything. Like the Hulkbusters, paid for for years, 800 and something dollars, long time paid for. And um, just money that could be spent other places. So that's why I buy from Baby Bad Toy Store. There are figures that have to get through Sideshow Collectibles. For instance, the uh, blue Mark 30, Blue Steel, had to come from Sideshow Exclusive. The Mark 15 Retro Armor, Mark 41 Retro Armor, Mark 23 Shades, it's all Sideshow Exclusives. So I still buy from Sideshow. Also, Sideshow, though, is limited by Hot Toys because they are an exclusive distributor as to where they can ship. They they are only allowed to ship to certain areas. Certain, some places are not allowed to um, ship to because then it starts infringing upon the other Hot Toys exclusive distributors like Toy Sapiens and uh, I don't remember the names of the other distributors that are out there. So they can only send to some places. We've got Toy Store can ship worldwide because they're not an exclusive distributor, they're just a toy store. They can ship to Singapore and Japan and, and uh, Thailand and Australia or any place that you want. Uh, Yes, I do have the Mark V and the Mark VI diecast on pre-order through uh, Big Bad Toy Store. I believe both of them. I don't think either one of them is exclusive. don't believe either one of them are exclusive, so they're either coming through Big Bad Toy Store. Bad thing about Big Bad Toy Store is, well, see, that's not even really a bad thing. I was just going to say I don't get them as quick as I would through Sideshow. I don't get them quick through Sideshow either. I, I, one of the things that blows my mind, I'm like the last person to get a figure. Everybody and their brothers already got their figures. The views, their video review has been up for three weeks, and I finally get one delivered. And it's, go figure. I don't live that far from Sideshow, but when even buying them from Sideshow, everybody and their brother gets one way before I do. So that is all the unboxings of everything that I have that I haven't had an opportunity to get into. Welcome to my my uh, room, my review station, my storage, my display. I uh, would like to put some glass on there. I need to figure out something there. I've got another shelf. 
and I'm just, just debating getting Detoffs, putting them in there, but really just, I think glass will take care of a lot of this, and everything gets dusty. And so, for instance, this, there's really no, nothing that can be done here. So that's the lineup of them up there. 41 Bones, 35, I mean, um, yeah, 35 Red Snapper, 40 Shotgun, Heartbreaker, 39 Star Boost, 33 Silver Centurion, Mark 15, Mark Blue 30, Hulk back there, Thanos behind them, you can't really see him there, uh, behind that the War Machines, down here is the Hall of Armor, I mean how would I even put all that in glass? Down here's the rest of the Hall of Armor. So it's, um, need a light under there. Got those toy boxes. I can see that or not. My 42 on the floor. Yeah, so dust is a major, major, major problem. And I don't dust often enough. It's a hassle. I have to admit, it is a hassle. Down here, some more figures. The, the Mark 7s are on the bottom there. You can't see them. They're behind all the boxes. They're just piled up. Astromex over there in the corner. Mark 38 Igor. Mark 3 and Ironmonger. The Ultrons. And the Spartus. And the Ant-Man. No, I never got around to that. one nine bank Ant-Man. This is another sold-out figure. But I bought this because Ant-Man is multi-sized. So even though it's not one sixth. So I bought it. And these are cool, these little uh, Bandai Marvel Select figures, SH Figure Arts, I mean, recommend them. He will go in front of Ant-Man, which I don't have a place for him right now. He's just sitting there. He needs to get a spot. So, uh, let's see. Gosh darn, the Big Bad Toy Store site, they redid that. And I'm lost on it now. I can't find anything on the Big Bad Toy Store site. I, I, it's so difficult to navigate around. Uh, Shopping for a sideshow is a nightmare. If you're in Canada, you're guaranteed to pay an additional customs fee. I am sorry to hear that. Uh, that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Big Bad Toy Store gets some of their stuff earlier than sideshow. I've not. <laughs> I've not gotten any of them earlier than anybody else. And I'm watching YouTube just like you guys. Watching YouTube, got my subscribers that I, uh, the uh, you know, the channels that I subscribe to, and, and off the bottom is of course Sean Long, of course, Charles Prime, friend of mine. Uh, I, I know Sean Long as well. We've hung out a couple of times, friend of mine as well. I don't doubt Sean Long remembers who I am though, but um, I call Charles Mr. Friend, and uh, I watch these guys and I'm like, how the heck did they get that figure? I haven't even been charged for the figure yet. Because remember, like I was saying, Big Bad Toy Store, you pay for it when they get it. And they send a little notice out, like you guys probably know. Uh, we expect to charge this in the next 10 days, and sometimes they charge it the next day. But I'm watching, like, off the bottom, it's reviewing a figure, and I'm like, how the heck did you even get that, dude? I haven't even paid for it yet. Uh, thank you, Richie. Is there a character you wish Hot Toys would do? Hmm. I, You know what? Some of the ones that they've announced that they would do, that they haven't done, I would like for them to do. I'd like to get Crossbones. We've got the helmet. I'd really like to get the yellow jacket to go with the Ant-Man. It's a great preview that they did on that. Um, anything else that I think that they should do? I'm sure there is something that I'm forgetting. I'm just blown away. I'm really happy to be able to, to uh, buy these figures and really love the quality that goes into the head sculpts. It's, it's a great time to be a figure collector right now. You know what I mean? Zach, thank you very much. Thank you very much, you too, Zach. Sideshow doesn't have an alternative shipping method either. It has to be FedEx. Yeah, that, oh, they've gone to FedEx now. Sideshow used to send UPS all the time. So now they're on FedEx. Yeah, Big Bad Toy Store lets you choose how you want it to ship. If you want it to pay extra money, you can have it shipped in uh, four days. Or you can go with the economy route and have it shipped in like 10 or, or something like that. And that's cool. Like I said, I, I, that's why I buy from Big Bad Toy Store. I, I recommend Big Bad Toy Store if you don't have any place else to buy them at because they ship worldwide and you don't pay for it until you pick it up. They get those figures early from Hong Kong. They spend a lot on shipping though. You're talking about the uh, Sideshow does or Big Bad Toy Store. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, you know, the, the, the people who are flippers. 
God bless me. Some of the figures I've got is through a flipper because it would be something that's been long come and gone. But I don't understand the people that break them up and I don't understand the people that flip them. I am happy for them because some of the head sculpts I bought and some of the hands and replacements that I bought were from people who buy a figure and bust it up. But uh, yeah, definitely a collector. It's like uh, just make out the will and say this is what will happen to these when I die. Because I don't think I could ever sell these figures, truthfully. Is that Mark Six? I need to do something with that Mark Six. Let me show it to you. Nothing wrong with it. It's just Pink Panties version. I need to do something with it. I'm probably just going to stick it on eBay. And as you can see, the panties are the pinkest of them all. I don't know if it's showing up or not. But that's the extra Mark Six I've got. I've got four of them right now. Which is one too many. Even with the diecast coming. So, I guess that's it, really. I'm going to make some videos of those. Thanks for hanging out with me. I don't know how long this video has been. Anybody have any idea how long this has been? And, um, any other questions for me? The Q&A section right now. Anything you want me to go back over? Any of the figures you want me to talk about that I've had in the past? Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, thanks for putting up with me. What do I think of rubber? <laughs> of rubber? <laughs> I think rubber's great, man. Keeps the tires on the road. You know, the YouTubers you mentioned, that's how they get the figures early. Oh, okay. You think so? possible. I do know that some of the guys have bought some figures from um, Budget Start and those guys and they've had them shipped out from Hong Kong. And I've spoken with Budget Start several times, um, Skyped them a few times, and it is a big community. You know, we all kind of know each other in one way or another or you've heard of them if you don't know them directly or personally. And you may deal with you know, there's certain peoples you you'll you'll constantly just bump into and, and um, interact with, and so yeah, I know that there's some guys that have done that, who've paid more to get the figure early, and that might be probably the the way that uh, like you're saying, like Optimus gets those figures way before it's even paid for by a Big Bad Toy Store. For the figure. I guess I don't follow you, Richie. Um, I like the Fisons. I don't know what they're made out of. Silicon, I am imagining. Silicon rubber. So, like my Fison figures, like the uh, the Lady Sparta there, and the Vampirella, which I just unboxed. Love them. Love the seamless figures. They, you know what? Every single figure has some type of something that could go wrong with it. And on these types of figures, the uh, I have um, a Fison that the clothing material came off, rubbed off onto the, the body. And so I would imagine this is probably going to have that same ability or possibility that it could rub off onto it. And that could be a problem. There really is, from my understanding, there's really no way of preventing that unless you just strip your figure. I love her thighs. This big muscular thighs there. That's really cool. I'm going to do a video of this girl. No doubt about it. But um, I love the seamless. You know, Hot Toys has made a few seamless figures. But nothing, in my opinion, tops the seamless rubber silicon bodies that Fison makes. Or TB League, I think is what they're calling themselves now. So if that's what your question is. Love them. But they have their inherent flaw to them. Yeah, favorite retailer, Big Bad Toy Store, sure enough. Guys, um, so I guess that's it. I can't really think of anything else to talk about. Thanks for thanks for joining and thanks for watching and thanks for spending Sunday afternoon with me. And uh, I don't know, I guess I could do more of these if you wanted to. We don't know what to do in regards to this. It's a lot easier doing this than doing the actual, all the work that goes into making a video. Sharnless talks about that a lot. Some of the guys talk about it a lot. 
It really takes work. I mean, hours. I spend 10, 20 hours sometimes making a movie, a video. Thanks, Richie. So I guess I'm going to log out. And thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate every one of you. And stay tuned and leave your comments in sections below and share my videos with your friends. Tell everybody about me. And I'll see you all in the next video. Happy collecting.